I made this turning here a couple of years ago. It was pretty popular. What was more popular was the fixture that I designed to cut these pieces and have them match the one next to it with perfect joints, no sanding. So I got asked a lot if I could show how that's made, and I did. And I'll put a link for this and the video for making that cutting fixture in the description. But the big question I got asked all the time, and I just got that question one or two days ago, that's eight inches what you designed it on. Can we make it bigger and how do you do it? So that's what it's about today. You can de decide on the shape because this is a bowl from a board method here. You can make a platter out of it if you wanted to. But I'm going to show how I created an 11 inch turning using this fixture. This fixture is designed to make an 8 inch diameter. At the end of the video, I'll go ahead and we'll go over this again. I'll show you how I'm going to make an 11 inch diameter turning from this fixture, which was designed to make an 8 inch. And I've had a lot of discussions with people saying you can't do it. We're going to see if we can do it today. So let's get over to the bandsaw and start cutting the pieces. I'm not going to talk a lot about that. Uh, maybe on one of them, but all of that is in the video for making this. So you're going to want to refer to that to get all the dimensions and how it's done. So I'm going to move on over to the bandsaw and start cutting some pieces. Okay, I've got it all set up. I've got a mask on, but I'll probably start the dust collector and that will get kind of noisy. And I'm going to speed it up a little bit after we get going because uh, I'd like you to watch the video on doing this where I have all the information. In the video on making this fixture, I do explain that that is a 3 16 wide, 10 tooth per inch blade. And the best cut is when you can move as slow as you can and keep a consistent feed on it. Just want to make sure that doesn't have any dust under there. And I get it up against the stop here and it fits that radius quite well. Got another piece in here to wedge it in place using a different type of wood here just for contrast. I get this in here and when I clamp this it should hold everything. Now we're going to cut two at one time and that should make a nice joint. This comes up, this comes out, that's finished. This goes back here, and the next one goes on top of it. Put my wedge in there. And we use a piece of cherry on top of it. Clamp it and cut. That's the whole process. I'm showing the cutting of each of the three types of wood here. I will repeat this four times so that I have 12 pieces. I've got all the pieces lined up the way they were when I cut them. So this piece would have been sitting on top of that. And if I made that cut, that joint should be exactly the same. Then this one would sit on this one and make that joint and so on. So it might be a little tricky gluing this together because it's much bigger than the smaller ones I made. I'm going to take it over to the workbench, put it under my glue press, and we'll get some glue on it. It's probably going to slip around a lot. And once I do that, get a clamp around it, I may have to tap it here and there to get it lined up just right. You're probably not going to be able to see much of that under the glue press. But the other two videos will show it quite well if you want to see the complete gluing process. So let's go give this a try. I use quite a bit of glue in the joints and I do that for a couple of reasons. It gives me a little more working time plus all that extra glue allows the pieces to slide into place a lot easier and if one of them doesn't look like it's in place I can still 
give it a little assistance and get it where it belongs. When I put the band clamp on, I tighten it up just with a little pressure against the end of the segments, and then I'll press down with the glue press, get it nice and flat, and then I'll tighten the band clamp up all the way, and I'll inspect everything, hammer it down a little bit, and tomorrow morning, I'm going to see how it turned out. Hey, looking good. Well, I just took this out of the glue press. It's been sitting all night. And what I didn't show after I had it in there is I will kind of clean the glue off and I'll look around for any openings. Then I'll take these little bar clamps I have and if this happens to be open for instance I'll put a clamp here and squeeze against it and I'll look around and maybe have to do another one. I think I ended up with three clamps on this and they all are nice and tight and it's sitting nice and flat and that glue press really helped with that. I'm going to get this cleaned up and probably fasten something on it uh, for a base and a tenon and we'll go ahead and put it in the lathe and make something out of it. So what I've done is I flattened one side and I hot glued a tenon to that side. I flattened the other side out, made it parallel, turned it pretty close to round. Well it's round, I have a little more to clean up. And then I glued a piece of paduk on it and turned a tenon on it and glued it on and now that's in the chuck. We're making a bowl from a board out of this so I'll be cutting rings. Here's a number of things that I've designed to help. This is a little support behind there. It'll catch the ring so it doesn't fly off and start twirling, hit the bed of the lathe and break. Although this probably wouldn't reach down there. I also use this little jig that I made for cutting rings and if you've seen a lot of my videos I've used that. What I recently did was I 3D printed one and I'm testing that out right now. I'm just curious how it'll work. How I set the 45 on this is a popsicle stick fits in that groove. I have a template that's at 45 and that's set at 45. I'll cut the first ring. We'll decide how much room we have left. I may change the angle. I may not. I'm not sure. I'll use the little parting tool. It's about a sixteenth by a quarter. This is a Robert Sorby micro parting tool. When I get my face shield, we'll cut the first ring. And I'm probably going to run around 600 RPM, 600 to 700, depending on the wood. It just keeps the tool from heating up too much. Okay, see that did its job. I'll get this pulled out and set it back up and we'll cut another ring. I have it set up to cut another piece. I want to show you how I make sure that these joints line up. After cutting the first one, I measure this diameter. This is the bottom inside diameter. I put that line here and then I cut to the outside of it and I leave that pencil line. That way that should match perfectly or as close as you need it. The other thing I did before I started cutting was I put some pencil lines across this way so that's how I want it to glue back together. If you don't do that you could get lost. It'll be four chances to line it up just right. If you do this you know you should be right. I've explained all this in those other videos so uh, please watch those. I think you'll learn more than what I'm showing you here. But I am trying to show you some of this now. I'm going to cut another ring and I usually touch this up in between rings because it will get kind of hot going in there on an angle. And the other thing, I feel that a quarter inch is about as large as I want to get on the height of this because when you're cutting on an angle the top and the bottom edge could easily hit on a wide one and it'll get really hot and it'll bind.
It looked like I had enough room to cut one more ring, so I went ahead and did it. I knew it would get really close to that base, and it turned out just fine. This may seem very tricky to get things to line up, but it really isn't. I'll move it in two directions after I place the pieces together, X and Y. Let's say I line up the X first, and I look at the Y direction, and if it's off, I'll slide it, and then I'll look at the X again. So you go back and forth a couple times, and it will be lined up. It sit for a couple minutes, the glue has got a little bit sticky. When I flip it over is when I really make sure everything is lined up, and you can see right there, I'm cleaning the joints off so I know where I'm at. And at this point in time, it's not going to move anymore. I'll let it sit for about 10 minutes like this. Then I flip it over and clamp it really good. And it'll sit for at least an hour before I do anything else. I have plenty of other things to work on while I wait. Same thing with this ring. It sat, I turn it over, I'm going to clamp it down, and I will let that sit for at least an hour, sometimes longer. And that's the last ring right there. So I'll meet you at the lathe, not in an hour, but maybe tomorrow morning. As you can see, I've got it back in the lathe. I'm really happy with the glue up. And the next step is to go ahead and do some turning on it. Doing about 800 RPM, just sharpened my half inch bowl gouge. All right, we're going to go ahead and turn the outside now, and you might wonder what this is. Well, it's it's a sample uh, bowl on the board that I turned quite a while ago. I've got it turned upside down in here to stabilize the piece. It's getting real thin here, and it's not real strong wood. I just like to support these types of turnings when I do the outside. Same half-inch bowl gouge. Just go down to right at 800 RPM. Alright, I got it all set up now to go over it with the negative brake scraper and then we can sand. A couple things about that roasted wood that I like. One is the colors they get out of it. Two is the price. It's fairly economical. What I don't like about it, it doesn't have any strength and it sounds like it's going to blow up all the time, but it didn't blow up on me this time. That will do it. All right, I'm all set up to do some sanding. And because the grain on these pieces all run this direction, I'm going to use sheets of sandpaper. Other than the piece of Paduke down here, but I don't think that's going to be a problem. When I do the inside, I might use the 2-inch discs on the sanding pads. 
and I'll be running this with the lathe in reverse at 350 RPM. Got it all sanded up to 400 and now everybody's favorite time when the first coat of finish goes on. I'm using polycrylic so I'll use water-based sanding sealer and I think it'll be a nice finish for this. So far it looks pretty nice. It'll really look nice after two coats of sealer, two coats of polycrylic. Okay, I'll see you when that's all done. So I'm running this at a much faster speed to avoid making the video being really long because I have some really important information at the end that I'd like to share. And if you're wondering, I have that bowl mounted in a set of coal jaws. Okay, we have finished the turning part of this video, and as promised, I have information on how to make a larger turning on the same bandsaw fixture that I designed almost two years ago to make an 8 inch diameter turning. Today, we made one that was almost 11 inches in diameter. I'll put that information after we're through here, just in case you're not interested in it, I don't want you to have to wait to see the bowl here. So I'm just going to show you a little bit here. I'm going to put it on the turntable and I'll tell you more about the bowl while it's spinning around and it is beautiful. But this is the 8 inch one that I did. I finished it uh, May 24th, 2021. And if you're wondering, there is no shift in these glue joints at all. All right, here it is. That is almost 11 inches. Well, it's about 10 and a half. The blank was to be 11 inches, but by the time I trued it up and put a shape that I liked on it, it's about 10 and a half. But look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I would probably use a different wood than this roasted wood if I make another one. This stuff is really kind of hard to work with for this shape, and it tends to chip. But fortunately, I think it looks pretty nice. There's the bottom. It's about three and a half inches tall, and I think it's ten and a half in diameter. And that finish looks like that because I used two coats of Minwax water-based sanding sealer, and I used three coats of Minwax polyacrylic, and I wet sanded the last one with 1,000 grit, and then I used axle abrasive paste and polish. And after I put that on there, it just amazed me. I was polishing the outside, and I could see. My fingers pointing back at me, so I do have a short on that out there. It amazed me so much I had to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and get this set up, show it to you on the turntable, and we'll talk about it a little bit while it's spinning, and we'll get on to that part with all that information. And I do hope you enjoyed this part, and if you watched the second part, you also enjoyed that. And I just appreciate you watching my videos. So uh, we're going to finish this up, and thanks so much again. Well, this is the end of the turning part of the video, and if you liked what you saw here, give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. If you're not subscribed, consider doing so, and thank you for all of you who are subscribed. The technical information is coming right up, 
If you're not interested in it, I understand, but skip to the end to see some more pictures. So I promised that I would try to explain how we could use this same fixture that made an 8 inch turning and make something much bigger. And I just made one that glued up to be 11 inches. I did turn it down so that it ended up 10 and a half just because of the shape I wanted to put on the outside. We'll start with the very first one and I'll show you why that we can do it here. That piece on the very first one was 2 and 3 sixteenths by 4 and a sixteenth. That made the 8 inch. That would go in there and it would get cut and we'd slide it like you've seen. It would make this piece here. And of course that piece went there. But the first scrap that came off of that was only that big. Not very big at all. So the next one I did well, the piece was three and a half by five and five eighths. That will make an 11 inch diameter. So I changed nothing on this fixture. That stop is still in the exact same place as I designed it. I've been thinking about doing this for quite some time, but you know when I make something, I may not even want to make it again. I enjoyed making the fixture. I enjoyed doing the turning. I like the fact that other people have made this and been very successful. I did receive a couple emails telling me, well, if you move this pin over here and this pin over there, you could make bigger ones. And I said, well, yeah, I, I think we probably could, but I can do it this way. So rather than you move your pins around, if you already have one of these, I'll show you what happens. That's three and a half by five and five eighths. Considerably bigger than that. We use the exact same rotation points and we cut it and we end up with this piece right here and it goes in right there just like the little one did. We stack the piece we make another cut. The uh, trade-off for it is it's a much larger scrap. So now we've just made another one that's 11 inches. I have not made a 12 inch but I know it'll work and I'll show you why on that. That would take, and I've tested this out to make sure, that's five and a half inches by seven inches. It will make this piece right here. And that would go in here. Now things start getting almost to the limit of what I have designed here. That's what we'd be cutting. You just have to start clear over here and, and make that cut. You get a really good sized scrap out of it when you do that. But, again, you could glue them together or you could make something out of those scraps. So this actually, just to prove this out, here's two like this. And if I get that corner down here, you'll see that this line continues. That is a, what they say, it's 12, that's, that's a little over 6 inch radius that comes through and it cuts that. We now have a 12 inch diameter. Those are scraps, those are scraps, and that's a future project right there. That's all you need to do to be able to make a bigger one. Larger diameter. So what I plan on maybe doing is making a new top part of this sled so that we don't have that big of a scrap and maybe we'll have more than 12 segments and I know that I can do this. I've already worked it out kind of in my head and I did a couple sketches in my CAD program but if this this uh, video on making this sled did quite well like I think it was a hundred and twelve thousand views something like that if you really want me to make another one of these that will make it even easier than doing this, see if you can get this video here up in that range. Get it up around the 100,000 view range and uh, I certainly will make another one to make things easier. And you can do that by sharing this around on all your social media because I really enjoy making these and sharing them. But it is a lot of work and 
those views will inspire me to do that. Okay, well, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put some pictures up of the two bowls. And uh, I appreciate you watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you made it this far, thank you very much. And leave a comment. Let me know what you thought about having this technical information in there. That's the main reason I made the video, and I thought it would combine it with a turning as well as just showing how to do it. So I really appreciate everyone watching and all your support. And so, till the next time, see you later.